Our given function is a power function. It's y is equal to x to the power of m. And then we look at our differential equation and we notice that two different derivatives appear in the equation. We have the second derivative as well as the first derivative. And this tells us that we need to take our power function and we need to differentiate it two times. We'll do it once to get y prime and then a second time to get y double prime. Now, as noted, this is a power function, so we would simply apply the power rule to compute the derivative. So for example, for y prime, we would multiply m by the initial coefficient, which is just a one right here. So m times one is m, and then we're going to have x to the power of m minus one. We always subtract one from the power using the power rule. Next, we'll compute the second derivative, y double prime. In this case, we're going to multiply our power m minus one times the present coefficient, which is m. So we would have m multiplied by m minus one, and then we're going to have x to a new power. We just have to subtract one from that old power. So we'll have m minus two. This is great. Now what we'll do is we'll take our second derivative y double prime and we'll plug it in to the differential equation. And we'll take our first derivative y prime and plug that into our differential equation as well. So let's take a look at that next. So we have gone ahead and plugged in those derivatives, and now we want to try to simplify this differential equation. Now, if we look carefully at the first term, we have x to the power of 1 multiplied by x to the power of m minus 2. We could even write the 1 there for some clarity. Let's recall that when we multiply those two values, we have to add the exponents. So when we multiply that x, we're going to have x to the power of 1 plus the other power, m minus 2, and then that is still multiplied by m and m minus one. Now, of course, we can simplify this power here. We can add the one and the negative two. And that gives us x to the power of m minus one. And then the rest of the differential equation. Now, this is kind of interesting because if you look really carefully, you have a common factor within each group of terms. You have x to the m minus one in the first and second terms. And because it's a common factor, of course, we can factor it out. So we're going to factor out x to the power of m minus 1. And then this ends up getting multiplied by the rest of the first term. So m times m minus 1 plus the rest of the second term, which is 2 times m. Let's simplify a little bit further. We can distribute this m here. This gives us m squared minus 1m plus 2m course we can combine the like terms minus 1m plus 2m is a plus m. After simplifying we might want to factor that m squared plus m. So this will have x to the m minus 1. We'll factor out an m and that'll leave us with m plus 1. Now we have basically the product of three terms and we're going to set them each equal to 0. For the first term, you're going to end up with x to the power of m minus 1 is equal to 0. But of course, we know that x to any power can never equal 0. So this equation has no solution. In the middle, we have m is equal to 0. And then at the end, we have m plus 1 is equal to 0. Let's subtract 1 from both sides of that. We get another solution of m equals negative 1. And so we're done with the problem. Recall that the original form of our power function was x to the power of m, and therefore two solutions of that form to this differential equation will be y is equal to x to the power of zero, or y is equal to x to the power of negative one. We could simplify a little bit, x to the power of zero is just one. So our final answers are y is equal to one, or y is equal to x to the power of negative 1. These are two solutions of the form y equals x to the power of m that satisfy the given differential equation.